Good afternoon to you. Mark South of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It's Wednesday, the 16th of June, 2021, and we have a little bit to talk about out there across the tropics today, including, as you can see from the title card there, the expected impacts from 92L, eventually probably going to become a tropical depression, very broad system. We'll take a look at that, as well as activity in the eastern Pacific, the eastern Atlantic, all sorts of stuff here this fine Wednesday afternoon. So first of all, here's the red X down in the Bay of Campeche, practically on shore down there south of 20 degrees latitude, deep in the Bay of Campeche, 70% chance of development over the next two days, 90% chance, so almost a shoe in over the next five days as this generally begins to get dislodged out of that region, moving northward soon and maybe heading towards the Gulf Coast somewhere, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, all of those areas will see impacts from this. And you can see the red hatched area of potential development as it moves generally north out of the area from this much talked about, and I won't say highly anticipated, but we've certainly talked about it a lot. This big cyclonic gyre down there, this Central American gyre, just this overall favorable pattern that has set up shop tangled up across the eastern Pacific parts of Central America and now the extreme southern Gulf of Mexico and the Bay of Campeche. Now we saw this coming with the expected MJO pulse several weeks ago, back in May. Ben Knoll had tweeted about it, other people saw it. These things don't just come out of nowhere. They are easy to predict now in terms of the pattern being there. First you get the pattern, then you see if something takes advantage of that pattern. And in this case, it's a slow evolving process, but it looks like something will take advantage of the pattern. And this is the June version of that. Later in the season, August, September into early October, maybe mid-October, who knows, these types of setups will produce hurricanes and some intense hurricanes. But in June, that is harder to do, thank goodness, because we're gonna have enough to deal with, considering this is gonna bring heavy rainfall and some other coastal impacts but we saw it coming, and here it is. All right, so there's the Atlantic side. Here's the Eastern Pacific. And again, this entire area through here, I'll show you on the satellite picture uh, animation, satellite animation in just a moment, how all of this disturbed weather is generally interconnected. You've got this one system here on the Atlantic side, and then this system over here in the Eastern Pacific, and that should go on to become a depression as well, kind of paralleling the coast here along Pacific Mexico. Some heavy rains from time to time along coastal Mexico on the Pacific side and over here in the Bay of Campeche as well from both of these disturbances. In the meantime, way out here to the southwest trying to be noticed, the remnants there of Carlos it took a long time for it to, de to develop. It never really amounted to much, but there it is, the remnants of it way, way out, not bothering anybody really. All right, so here's a great example of tracking the vorticity of both systems here in the Atlantic Basin. Let me use the color black to make these pop a little better. Here's 92L and its vorticity signature. Large, spread out, not particularly intense, but it's there, a, a decent reflection of it. And then we have our system in the Eastern Pacific. I think that's 93E or something like that. Uh, remember the E is for East Pack, the L on these systems, these invest numbers, the L is for Atlantic. And so you got these two systems down here kind of tangled up with each other, both of them competing for energy. And then the land mass separating these two kind of throws another uh, complex piece of the puzzle into the overall equation. So not much in the way of, you know, you don't look at that and go, oh yeah, there it comes. You know, that's enough energy down there that yes, there's some spin in the atmosphere and we'll take a look at it in a different perspective in just a moment. Uh, also, out in the open tropical Atlantic, the tropical wave, formerly Invest Area 94L, another piece of energy heading towards the islands over here that will bring some showers and thunderstorms and a wind shift as that wave of energy comes across, the easterly wave as we call it, migrates westward over time. Everything else is up here in the mid to high latitudes, all kinds of energy stretched out. Uh, over the land masses and again in the higher latitudes, but it's down here in the tropics that we watch for these areas of energy to bundle up 
And the one in the Bay of Campeche is trying, but it's not that impressive just yet. And there's a few, few reasons why. If we look at the water vapor imagery, and this is a neat way to kind of see through the atmosphere and see some of the structure and the way that the different fluidities of the atmosphere are responding to you know, the ebbs and flows of other pieces of the atmosphere. Everything's connected. So here's an upper level low pressure area right here. Uh, spinning over southwest Texas. Then there's another upper, le upper level low that's starting to weaken and sort of change its orientation and its overall structure, and that's helping to create this more diffluent flow over 92L so the air is able to spread out more evenly instead of being pushed off in a singular direction. But the overall pattern down here, you can just see this general envelope of fairly favorable conditions not the best, but it's not like we're seeing strong southwesterly winds just cut across the whole thing. You know, that's a very easy thing to spot. And can you see it? There it is right there, for example. And it imparts shear, for example, over that tropical wave that I was talking about. There's another large upper level low sitting out over the tropical uh, Atlantic out in the middle of nowhere. But it's this feature here, the overall pattern of the cyclonic gyre down here at the surface to the you know, lower 5,000 feet or so of the atmosphere. The mid and upper levels, you've got this upper level low that's got some shear coming in. There's also some dry air as well that's getting pulled in and around and kind of ejected or injected into the system. And then you've got your giant heat ridge sitting out here over the Four Corners region. You've been hearing a lot about that. Very little in the way of moisture, unfortunately. For them, the folks out there, quite literally baking and, uh, you know, temperatures well into the hundreds. So what's going to happen? Well, as you can see, let's go switch over to the infrared satellite picture. It's a very large, loosely organized system. Again, typical for June. And that's a good thing. If we had routine, strong hurricanes that are well organized, classic textbook in June, nobody could live along the coast anywhere. It just wouldn't be possible. I mean, I guess it would. We'd find a way, I'm sure. But you get the idea. You don't usually see very well-organized systems in June. And so this is no different. You've got this large, sprawling area of turning in the atmosphere down here, different pieces of energy trying to rotate around every once in a while, the larger overall vorticity package that I showed you sitting over the southern gulf in the Bay of Campeche, and you got your tropical wave here getting sheared, another one out here. But look, there's the dry air, there's that Saharan air layer just completely enveloping this system. And if it tries to develop deep convection where it breathes in, you know, to inflate itself and create those thunderstorms, if it takes that deep breath, so to speak, it's just going to pull in that dry air and it basically self-destructs. It's much too early you know, to be seeing development out that way. But it's a pretty potent tropical wave, nevertheless. And we can basically thank this favorable upward motion pattern, the Madden-Julian oscillation, generally present throughout this entire region with maybe an embedded what we call convectively coupled Kelvin wave in here. It's all just fancy talk for, eh, it's kind of favorable. June version not favorable late August version. That's a whole different story, and we know what that looks like, you know, and that's coming later, almost certainly. So water temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico certainly won't be an inhibitor for 92L. It's sitting down here right now. All of the water down here, 80 to 85 degrees. Generally speaking, the 80s are basically over here, the low 80s. Everything else is low to mid 80s, and you know, we're talking near 30 Celsius and higher up towards the shelf water here of the northern gulf and so there will be abundant moisture latent heat in the lower levels of the atmosphere for 92L to tap into but again the big key to this all along and that's what I've been watching for in the modeling how much does it bundle that energy and try to focus it to get a, a more intense system where you drop the pressure and you develop a more banded look to it an overall concentrated look uh, where you have a higher wind event and, you know, a lower pressure event, higher storm surge because of that wind. And I just don't see that happening in the guidance. None of it. You know, none of the reliable guidance. It's just not there.
So what will be the impact? You know, that's the question. A lot of people want to know. So let's take a look at two different ways of looking at this model here, the GFS. 12Z today, 850 millibars in the atmosphere, so about 5,000 feet up. And here is that cyclonic vorticity that I was talking about down here. And it's pretty well pronounced. This is 5,000 feet up, and the wind is not that strong. You can see some of these wind barbs in here are 5, 10 knots at best. So you do have the cyclonic turning. That's there, broad, low pressure, no doubt about it. But there's just not much bite to it. You know, the, the pressures are not very low down there, and there's not much with it. So let's move this out into time, 24 hours out, Thursday morning now, tomorrow morning. Notice what happens. You get these little pieces of energy here that are rotating around, and it's not bundling in one area like right there. That's not happening. And unless that happens, and until that happens, it's not going to get to be a very powerful wind event. And I know a lot of people focus on that. You know, how strong is the wind? How low is the pressure? What you need to be thinking here, looking at those colors, that vorticity that does come together, now we're at 48 hours out, is you need to be thinking this will bring in a lot of moisture. A strong southerly flow towards the central Gulf Coast, a lot of rain on the eastern side of it, and where you do have that onshore flow up into here, you're going to have some storm surge problems. Absolutely. You push all that water, trying to get the color scheme to work in my favor, all that water getting pushed towards the northern Gulf Coast, you know, Louisiana, Mississippi, maybe Alabama, you're going to see some water level rises. No doubt about it. So the impacts, wind and maybe tropical storm conditions, sure. 35, 45, 50 mi 55 miles per hour in a few places exposed along the coast. Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised by that at all. But that's not the real issue. The issue is going to be 6, 8, 10 inches of rain along the coast and inland. I want to show you that in just a moment. And yes, because of that push onshore of the water, I mean, you can do it right there in your own house. Get you a cup of water, a little saucer, and blow across the top of it. If you could blow straight across for a minute straight, don't try it because you'll pass out, you could blow all that water over to one side of that bowl. That's storm surge, you know, in, in a nutshell. So all that flow coming around that cyclonic turning will push the Gulf of Mexico onshore so people that are still picking up the pieces after Delta, Laura, Zeta, you know, there's dock repairs going on, the oil interests down there, petrochemical boats that go out, helicopters, whatever. Anybody working down there, yes, this will have impacts. You know, and it might get a name. It may make it to Tropical Storm Claudette, and that's fine. It should be if it gets there, you know. Uh, but the impacts will be depending on who's, you know, having to deal with things. You know, you can have a lot of heavy rain, and it floods your yard, and it gets into your house or whatever, and it's very impactful for you. And it's going to affect a lot of people. This is now out to 72 hours. Sunday, uh, I'm sorry, Saturday morning. Here we are. It's onshore, generally speaking, broad area. Lots of rain with it. Onshore flow, just like I talked about. So, yes, some impacts are coming. An aggravation, a big nuisance, kind of ruining your weekend. And you got to think about travel. This is now 96 hours out. It gets up into Alabama, uh, northwest Alabama, and all that orange you see in here, that's that vorticity. That's energy. And that tells me big rainmaker for a large swath of real estate down here. Six, eight, ten inches of rain, maybe a foot. And you know, up here in parts of Alabama, the elevation changes. So you could have some flash flooding issues. So bottom line, impacts are coming. All right? So just be aware of that. And as I mentioned, travel. Anybody doing long-haul trucking along the interstates down there, 10 east-west across the southern Gulf there, the Gulf Coast region, I-20. You know, you got to be paying attention to these things. Uh, vacationers, lots of people out and about now. Things are wide open across the country this year. It's a lot different than a year ago. So a lot more people are traveling. If you're driving through that heavy rain, it could be blinding at times. So take this seriously. Oh, yeah, there's a tropical system coming. The weather with it is bigger than me. It's more impactful than I'm used to dealing with, perhaps. So I better pay attention to it. That's what I want you to think. I want you to be smart and informed about it and not blow it off. I'm not blowing this out of proportion. It's not a hurricane coming. We know that. 
but there are impacts. So don't dismiss it as nothing. By day five, the energy gets, ca gets caught up on the northwest side of the subtropical ridge right here. See that big old high pressure area out there? Trough swinging through, helping to kick this out. And so the heavy rain threat will be there for a few days, all right? And I can show you this a little easier here on the uh, humidity, the relative humidity chart from Tropical Tidbits. All this green through here is your high humidity areas and the browns, <coughs> you know, dry and dusty, uh, sort of. That's an oversimplification of it, but you get the idea. So let's watch and see how this winds up literally and brings all that moisture into the deep south, you see? So when it comes in to Louisiana on Saturday morning, the low pressure may be down here near Vermilion Bay, Sippermore Point. West of there, Lake Charles, yeah, a few rain showers. West of there, Port Arthur, Houston, Galveston, nope. <laughs> it's going to be dry. You're going to be on the back side of it. It's this front side all the way over into the Florida Panhandle. You know, the deep south down here, the Gulf Coast, Central Gulf Coast. Look at this. This is the shape of the moisture envelope of the system. Looks like a big comma, doesn't it? And that's what it'll look like on satellite, inevitably. And I think, let me just scroll down. You do get the infrared. Uh, da, 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 trying to remember where it is. Sorry, I don't use it very often. Simulated infrared satellite. So there you go. 73 hours, 72 hours out. This is what it would look like, simulated infrared. Isn't it amazing how the computer models can do this? Look at that. Big, messy, wet, drenching kind of system. New Orleans, Gulfport, you know, Baton Rouge, areas inland from there, Lafayette, into southern Mississippi, and eventually through Montgomery, Birmingham, Hattiesburg, Madison, wherever, right? Maybe as far east as parts of the Florida Panhandle. It's going to have impacts. Be ready for it. Be smart, especially if you're traveling. All right. Every morning, I'll update you on what I'm looking at through the podcast. It's growing a little bit each day. I just noticed over on Apple Podcasts that it's fairly easy to find. You just search Hurricane Season, the podcast. All those words, four words, Hurricane Season, the podcast. And there's the logo. That's easy to spot You know, when you're looking for which one is Mark's. We'll just look for the logo. It's like that. And oh, it's over here. I'm flipped. The mirror image from the camera threw me off. And it's just like that. Look for that logo on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, pretty much anywhere. You can even ask Alexa to play Hurricane Season, the podcast. And if you're connected through Spotify, it should. At least it does on mine. And I give you a short digest at what I'm looking at each day. And then in the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion, I will go over it in more detail, just like we're doing here on the YouTubes. All right? Speaking of YouTube, it's been growing as of late. I appreciate that. Great to have a bunch of new subscribers. Help keep that trend going. Subscribe, share the video with your friends, family, and colleagues, and we can make this even bigger because of you. It's amazing how much has grown just in the last four years. I've been on YouTube since 2006, but I really didn't do much with it until 2017. Once you started to be able to do live streaming on YouTube in the app, I was doing that, and it really started to grow, especially during Harvey. And now we have eclipsed 33,000 subscribers. And, you know, for me, that's great. I'll take it. I appreciate it. It's great to have you guys there. You post some intelligent stuff 99% of the time. Yeah, every once in a while, you get a knucklehead out there. But, you know, that's a pretty good batting average, 99 or whatever. So you, you get what I'm saying. Pretty good percentage. <laughs> I don't know much about baseball, but you get the idea it's great to have you guys, and almost every one of you are, are just wonderful to have the comments from. And uh, keep it coming. I do enjoy it. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. It's all Hurricane Track, and we are crowdfunded through Patreon, patreon.com slash hurricane track. All right, that is it for me for this afternoon. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. I'll be back with you in the morning with the hurricane season, uh, the podcast, five minutes or so, usually five minutes or less. And then we'll speak again tomorrow afternoon in the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. I'm Mark Sutter. Thanks for watching. We'll chat some more tomorrow.